Recently, I heard from an old friend, Pranella. She was once well known in my circle, but had since dropped off the map. I didn't know what had become of her. There were several alarming rumors. So naturally, when she invited me to lunch, I was intrigued. My name is Bradley Krogsgaard, and this is My Lunch with Pranella. I had heard all manner of outlandish things about Prue. That she had studied meditation from a yogi in deepest Hamilton, or that she'd had a stint playing tambourine for a prominent New Guinea reggae band, even that she had taken up professional chess. And yet here she was, bright-eyed, large as life, and safe as houses. I'd like a medium salad and water, please. Uh, medium water. I need a grilled cheese sandwich, man, with mucho cheese and more butter than is conchable, and enough bread to keep me groovy, kitty cat, and a carrot juice. Are you Ukrainian by any chance? I like to pretend I'm a secret interviewer for asking people questions when they can't hear me and couldn't possibly answer. Ukrainians often smell like cabbage. I I'm not putting it down, it it's a culture thing. It's a very cabbage-based culture. Now, tell me all. Bradley, let me tell you, something happened, man. I had a full-on group taxi experience. The most important thing to know is, it happened on a Wednesday at a bus stop. It was a cloudy day, the wind was blowing from the south, a mysterious man, tall, dark and tall with smartly pressed trousers. Oh, I've often felt All was well, and then I dropped my grilled cheese sandwich. I had made it that morning. The low humidity and rising bear market pressure were ideal conditions for Swiss cheese and rye. You were despondent? Despondent, yes but also brazen and unrepentant. Mm. He spoke to me, and he said, Nothing worse than a dropped sandwich, or a dropped cell phone, or a dropped Davenport desk. Actually, there's quite a lot worse than a dropped sandwich. I worked hard on that sandwich, man. Mm -hmm. I was up at 9 a.m. picking the bread and alphabetizing the cheese, and just like that, my groovy young sandwich was dashed to the ground. It's like my mother always said, to mourn a sandwich is to thrash against humanity. Humidity was 27%. Precipitation was imminent. Moderately imminent. And what about the sandwich? Called him sick and went home and made a new one. Took about five hours. And how was it? Delightful, but also infused with impiety and regret. Mm. Food. Thank you, Andromeda. My name's Daisy. Smells a little off, man. What's the barometric pressure? 15 kilorads. You know, this is the worst lunch I've had all day. Hmm. I've got to get home and start slicing cheese for dinner. You know, she reminds me of a black bear I once saw eating soup. Oh, bears. In my experience, bears are very uppity. They think they're all fancy or whatever. They're like, look at me, I'm the world's largest predatory land mammal. And I'm all like, that's only polar bears. You can't count all bears under that. Obviously. the restaurant and the world felt a little different. I could still hear Daisy's voice in my ears. Quando per mucho mi amore de felice garazon. I could feel the humidity rising and the air pressure dropping and the temperature remaining stable, moderately stable. I thought about grilled cheese sandwiches 
and mysterious men in smartly pressed trousers. I thought about a herd of moose. But most of all, I thought about my lunch with Bradley. What's taking this guy so long, man? Oh! It's you, isn't it? I'd swear it is. Is it? Don't tease me. You've got that look. Look? The look of a man running from his past. Running from an old acquaintance. Someone he lets slip away. Someone he thinks about often. I've got a... a to-do. A, a, a movie night with, with some friends. <laughs> That's so you. So exactly and over precisely you. From now until tomorrow, when someone asks me who is Leo, I'll only respond movie night with friends. As I left the disreputable street vendor, I thought about my so called movie night with friends. I wondered why she called me Leo. I thought about otters and parsnips and the ancient medium of puppetry. Most of all, I thought about my chance meeting with Prunella. God, I hate this movie. It's so half-assed and contrived. Pass the popcorn. If it were a cockroach, I'd stomp on it. If it were a dude, I'd punch it in the throat. If it were a parsnip, I'd throw it in the blender. Leo, quit hogging the popcorn. Not cool. If it were a painting, I'd rip it up into a bunch of tiny pieces, and then I'd light those pieces on fire and have them jettisoned into the vacuum of space, Hunter S. Thompson style. Pass the freaking popcorn. If it were a Latin American democracy, I'd undermine its economy through a series of tariffs, trade embargoes, and protectionist tax laws, while simultaneously delegitimizing the government via a multi-pronged campaign of propaganda and misinformation, thus creating an untenable state of political and economic chaos. You want we can just change the channel. What difference does that make? Any change the channel. Here, you'll love this show. This guy hates movies almost as much as you do. Tonight, on Gavin Gregson's second row balcony, Dana Murphy tries to win back Cal Masterson in clouds, daisies, and laughter. Tracy, I just can't. But Cliff, you have to, because I love you. I love you more than warm cookies and milk, more than soup on a rainy day, more than a dish of jam distantly forgotten on an arbitrary archway. More than the soft scent of dust as you bring down from a high bookshelf a battered shoebox of letters, photos, deceit, vengeance, and triumph. Because if you don't, it will break my heart. Oh, Tracy. There's nothing worse than a broken heart, except a dropped cell phone or a dropped Davenport desk. Actually, there's quite a lot worse than a broken heart. Absolutely abysmal. This is the kind of stale, festering drivel that makes stabbing yourself in the head seem like a reasonable life choice. I counted on my watch, and I kid you not, 
14 minutes passed without a single verb being used. I'd rather smash my toes with a hammer than see this movie again. I'd rather stare directly into the sun than see this movie again. I'd like to grow to giant proportions and stamp every movie theater into the ground than let anybody see this movie again. <sighs> I maybe went a little too far on that one. It was bad, but not smash my toes with a hammer bad. I've probably seen worse movies. I didn't hate everything about it. The lead actress was sort of cute in an off-putting sort of way. And I did laugh, you know, once or twice. Although the thing about the verbs was true. You know? The people that worked on this movie, they worked really hard. And they wanted it to be good. I, I don't know why I do this. Tear down things other people create. Until next time on Gavin Gregson's Second Row Balcony. I like his style. What did we just watch? Mesmerizing, isn't it? It's like watching a car accident in slow motion. Okay, my turn to pick a show. No. 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 There, we'll watch this one. Isn't that... Mickey? Mickey? Hello? Mickey? Hello? Who's there? You first. Mickey? Is that you, Mickey? There's no Mickey here. <laughs> Mickey, please, it's me. Open the door. Go away, I'm, I'm not Mickey. Mickey, please! Mickey, please! Go away, I'm not Mickey! you really are Mickey. Now I don't know where to go. Your smile, your laugh, 
your funny accents and cartoon voices. I miss your extended narratives and skilled oratory. Oh, Nikki, tell me you love me. It's okay, it's okay. I understand. It seems we were never meant to be. That was the last time I saw Mickey. Now I can't stop wandering the city. In some ways, it was the worst three months of my life. But in other ways, it was a whirlwind of hedonism. Maybe it was the way he looked at me. Or maybe it was because I knew it would be the last time, but I just felt... something... You know? Raw sweet potatoes taste a lot like beets. That was kind of weird. I'm late for work. Tonight, on Gavin Gregson's second row balcony, Cal Masterson tries to win back Dana Murphy in Picnic in a Park, Under the Stars, Near a Stream. Charles, I can't. Martha, you have to. Because I love you. Although, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's your choice, really. Well... It seems pretty bad, but hey, who am I to say? Gavin, do you want some Spanakopita? The box is on sale, so I bought two. Mom, I'm doing my show. Gavin, do you know where the scissors are? You know, the ones with the red handle? Not those ones, the good ones, not the red ones. No, Mom! What movie are you reviewing this week? Mom! Mom? Who's in it? Dana Murphy, Mom. Oh, I like that Dana Murphy. Such a sweetheart. Talented and pretty. Gavin, do you know where the hairbrush is? Here it is. Patty was using it. I like that, Patty. I'm glad you finally have a girlfriend. Do you need some help with your show, Gavin? I know a lot about movies. There are only and exactly two kinds of people in this world. Two kinds of people in this world. People who keep their car messy and people who keep it clean. But I knew a man once. But I knew a man once. For one wild summer and he was a different kind altogether. The kind without a car. Have you ever desired something? Have you ever desired something so intensely you thought you would die. For him, it was a passage to India. For me, it was a grapefruit that wouldn't squirt. But in the end, his hair was implausible and his trousers indefensible. He told me, never judge a book by its cover. I told him, I judge every book by its cover. He told me, fools rush in where angels fear rye bread. And so it began. And so it began. A misbegotten romantic folly full of passionate nights. Passionate nights. Tempestuous days. Indifferent mornings and ambiguous afternoons. And rather inevitably. And rather inevitably. The infatuation ended. He was no longer the mysterious stranger, but a common Joe bicyclist. 
another bureaucrat sorting stationary supplies and pruning topiaries. He told me the darkest hour is just before dawn. I told him it gets I told him it gets lighter gradually in the moments before dawn. It's already quite bright out. And yet I could not tear myself away. And yet I could not tear myself away from the excitement, the thrill and terror. Have you ever eaten a bowl of peaches on a carousel horse? I have. My god, have I ever. But like any tragic tale, but like any tragic tale of love, betrayal, and quality frames at a reasonable price, it couldn't last. It's like I always say, never trust a man who wears socks with sandals. We stood on a railway platform and he told me all that glitters must come to an end and all that's gold is not always good. And two's company and three's a crowd and four's a hand of bridge. I'm not familiar with those expressions myself, but I know that it's many a slip betwixt the cup and a lip and we said it's soonest to mend and horses for courses, if you know what I mean. Life is such a bother. Thank you.